a second to think about my food, then no. Having somebody supply me with cheap protein is very easy. <laughs> I think listening to what I've heard today, listening to, you know, Minette Batters, Andrew Fern, all these experts in their field, people from the John Innes Centre, there's definitely a future for farming. Brexit's going ahead, we just have to get on with it. You know, I don't think we're going to turn direction and go back and remain within Europe. So there are new opportunities out there. For a small enterprise like us, we have to embrace science, technology. I think collaboration is a key as well, collaborating with our neighbouring farmers. But also, you know, responding to what the consumers want. And I think if we can do all of those things, I think, yeah, the future's bright for British farming. I think it's, it's a mixture of excitement and a lot of trepidation all mixed into one because, let's face it, no one actually knows what is going to happen, least of all us or, it seems, the government ministers at this point. So it's quite a, it, it's actually quite a scary time, but I, I'm quite hopeful that people are going to want to buy locally produced food and in which case that will help my business. Um, larger scale businesses than that are going to really struggle I think in terms of like, um, immigrant workers that are coming in on seasonal workers permits. That's going to be a real big thing affecting our industry and you know it's, it's almost to that point of nervous excitement I think but we're all on the end of March when we might finally hopefully get some answers but even then there's no guarantee. I'm not particularly confident um, particularly for the last two or three speakers um, saying that really everybody's buying on price um, and we're trying to produce a, a quality product and I think our problem it looks like some of our um, market is going to be abroad rather than the UK which is seems crazy um, in terms of confidence I think I have to be better than my neighbors so that I'm one of the last ones standing I am still very confident with the pig industry, you know, the export markets to China, a Asia and now America, there is a lot of potential to be had there and if we can make the most of them, I think, you know, we will continue to thrive and um, go from strength to strength. Regardless of whether it's a no deal or deal with Brexit, there will be a few years of hardship. But I think everyone has to eat, we will have to be more sustainable, we have got the best food standards in the world on paper. I think Norfolk farming in general, with the hub we've got, the variety we've got, I think we'll be alright, we'll survive and we will thrive. Okay, well I think that uh, we've we heard today that we probably will get a deal, although it'll go to the very last minute, uh, and actually, but actually our focus probably should be more on what's happening with the Ag Bill, um, it's, with the subsidies going in a couple of years' time, it's starting to decline in a couple of years' time, and actually that's where our focus should really be, rather than Brexit, we can't do anything about the Brexit bit, so let's focus on that and how we adjust our businesses uh, to, to cope with that reduction in, in income. There's a, there's a buzz around today, there is a buzz, and that, that buzz comes out of optimism and uh, level of confidence. Um, my level of confidence is high, provided we get a deal on Brexit. I was very, very clear today that we need that deal. Um, you know, we, we need to have some deal, we can't go out with no deal. Provided we get a deal, actually the confidence levels are very high.